morning and a very good afternoon to everybody. Today I'm talking about a topic which is uh, close to everybody's heart, I think, because in some way or the other we have all been through trauma. But usually what we do is we survive through trauma. The topic of my speech today is that we are going to thrive through trauma. So, we are going to try and have a new look at trauma. You will find that after having been through trauma of any type, it has strengthened you. It is actually what I have become today and what you all have become today. Um, shall we have a raise of hand, hands of how many people have been through trauma recently? Great. I would say great, but today you will find out that it was great. How many have been through it five years ago? Yes, quite a few. And how many have been through it ten years ago? Yes, so we all have been through trauma and uh, basically it is something when you have to bear something which is unbearable, which is impossible and you have to still go through it. And when you are going through it, these are the points that I'm going to show you, which I hope you will be able to manage. So, uh, I am a Brigadier's daughter and an Air Commodore's wife, and I think of everything in the way army men and people from the forces think. So, what they do is, they have exercises. And each exercise is designed, I'm talking about the military exercise. Each exercise is designed to develop a certain quality in the people. And they make them go through the most horrific experiences which um, any normal human being cannot go through. And they make them go through it and at the end of it, they find out that they have developed the skills that the generals and all what they do develop in them because they're preparing them for a war situation. Basically our lives ourselves is like a war situation. We are fighting little battles here, there and everywhere. It will bring out, so remember, going through trauma will bring out the best in you if you allow it and your insight will also grow. So I want to show you um, sorry, I think this is my story, uh, story my uh, trauma story, which I have done briefly. I won't read it out, but you can see that it was, this is still the tip, tip of the iceberg. And 10 years ago, uh, my husband fell ill, who was very, uh, you know, in very, very good health and suddenly he develops headaches and we find out that he has got GBM4, which is one of the worst cancers and it was in stage four. That itself was a bad enough thing and we went through terrible financial crisis. I went through a lot, I'm not going to read out anything. You all can just see all the things that I had to face in these last 10 years. So, um, while going through this, I was facing different challenges. It was a, you know, catch-22 situation. If I didn't go into my house, how could I uh, get any, uh, complete my house? How could I have anybody to get the rent from? And if I didn't get the rent, how could I pay the debt? And so I had laborers who were working on my house who knew that I had no money and still they were with working. I had a, an architect who was working day and night so that I can move into my house. It had no heating and you saw a glimpse of the house, the shape it was in, and in that shape, just with a little plaster on it, and I made sure that the grills were there. My daughter and I, she was a teenager then, and I moved into the house. We were facing 
court cases, we were facing death, death threats. You all have seen what happens to women, even with men in the house. And here were two of us living alone in the house, and we were ready to fight it all in order to get what was our due. And so we carried on. This was the situation. And my architect said never in her life had she seen anybody move into a house in this shape. It was February and it was freezing cold when we used to talk to each other. We had fog coming out of our uh, mouths. We used to wear three, three coats to, <laughs> to, to move around. And um, my cook kept, kept coming. He refused to take any pay. My maid kept coming. They refused to take any pay. So um, uh, I'll give you a little flashback. Many people say, how did you manage to uh, overcome all these things? And I also ask my question, of course it was the Almighty. His was the greatest help. God helped me at every step. But uh, there were a few other things that I used to do, which were a habit for the last 15 years. And that is my recommendation, that you all make it a habit to um, have a weekly plan and make it the way I'm going to suggest it to you today. So Dr. Mohadat Rana, who is a leading psychiatrist, when he saw my diary and the way I did work, manage myself in the week, he was very impressed and he said, you know, WHO also suggests this. And if you manage yourself like this on a weekly basis, you will be able to help yourself get overcome all the challenges that come in your uh, in your way. So, uh, no matter what you're going through, you you should be always conscious of your strengths and weaknesses, but never tell anybody else about it. Most of us women do this. <laughs> oh, I have this problem. I have that problem. No. Show a very calm face and uh, carry on. You should know your inner strengths and uh, listen and never listen to anybody who does not walk their talk. Many people will give you advice, but they do not do follow their own advice. Why should you follow their advice? So anyhow, so thriving through trauma rules. These are the ones which I found. <sighs> I don't know how I had the sense. Actually, I had been through a recent trauma earlier and I had become very spiritually strong. And due to that, when my problems got tired, my husband was so sick, I realized that all this is just too much. I'm not going to ask anybody for their help. I will only ask my God. People will reach out, I will accept help when it is offered if I feel this is the right person. Otherwise, I will not take that help. So, the um, other big, big thing that I learned from my father was, do not let it damage you. This is an extremely important point. My father is a Ghazi. He's came through two uh, wars and he managed to get out of the hard jail, which is the worst Indian day, jail. Most people lose their sanity over there. But my father came out laughing from there because he made sure that he will not allow anybody else. You give the permission for another person to uh, damage you. It's only with your permission that somebody has the right to damage you. Do not give that permission. So uh, have fun activities, have uh, Laugh at the faces of your enemies better than crying. It works much better. And <laughs> my daughter Valia taught me this. And the way I, when I used it, oh my God, I love it. And I tried it every time I met my enemies, whether they are twice my age, whatever, how much older they are than me. I used to just laugh at their faces. I could just look, look through them. Only cry in front of God, because he is the only one who can do something about your problem. These human beings cannot do that much. They can do nothing for you. Many people make tall claims, 
Excuse me, this is all I needed. <laughs> I think we'll have to take a little break to see that. Oh, sorry, wait. I'll get it back. Okay, so we went through all this and now we come to the weekly plan. Before this, I would like to um, mention uh, Howard's longest lasting uh, research in which they found out that those people who were, were successful in life, who managed to um, lead their lives keeping good relationships with other people, it wasn't their fitness, it wasn't their health, it wasn't their wealth, it was their relationships. And I don't know, uh, Stephen R. Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, in that it says, merge your roles with your goals. So when you're making your weekly plan, and then there was another one, who is Marcus, well, uh, Marcus Buckingham. Read his book, Go for Your Strengths. Going for your strengths means, it's a beautiful book, just, it's just amazing. So he always said, when you start your week, first note down six points from your previous week, okay? Last week, these, these things were left out. This week we will do, or this was the highlight of the last week. Next, you write about, see, these six points are the minimum that you will definitely go through. Now, this is the main gist of my talk today. This, is, these are the five sections of yourself, of your being, which you have to care for on a weekly basis. And this you do on a normal, in your normal life also. And when you're going through a trauma, then you do it even more consciously. Don't say I'm too busy for it. It just takes 10, 15 minutes. I'm not asking you to write big paragraphs, just one little, little jotted point and write so first, when you're talking about myself, relationship with people, the biggest relationship is the one you have with yourself. You are the most important person. If you don't take good care of yourself, you will not be able to take care either of your children or your parents or anybody else. So physically, you have to check yourself out physically and get at least one annual checkup every year. We girls are not very good at it. Men usually get it from their office. Usually the officers insist, insist on it. You insist on it that I will also get it done. Intellectually, you keep your brain working. I'm 64 years old, but I really feel 34 years old. I've, I've been reading three books a week and um, I have learned a lot from people. And if you have been checking my Instagram story, you'll be seeing I start my, <laughs> I can see one person is there and quite a few others. So you will see I, I'd have my breakfast along with the motivational talk which is going on. Simon Sinek is these days my big favorite and there are many others. So it, it's intellectually in improving yourself. When you're learning something new, when you're reading something, so you're improving yourself. When you are going through a trauma, you will inform yourself about the kind of tra trauma that you are facing. Then there is the spiritual side. Dalai Lama, if, how many of you have heard of Dalai Lama? Oh, I'm glad. And the others, please do search for him, a great personality. Once he was asked, uh, you were taken out of, you were thrown out of your country, you were put in exile, you lost they broke your temples, they, they broke your home, they lo you, you lost everything in your country. You were made to live uh, outside in another alien country. Still you look so happy, still you look so satisfied. You are at peace. He said they can take away everything but not my soul. So, so spiritual, your spiritual side is your soul side. If you're saying your prayers, good. If you're keeping the fast, excellent. Then you're giving charity. You're sharing your goods with other people. You're feeding people. You're, you're, you're increasing your spiritual strength by in helping others, being doing kind gestures to people who can never repay you back. 
that is the most beautiful part because then you are only doing it for God. And that gives you such a happy feeling throughout the day as we are speaking. Um, about 200 people are just now having food from my doorstep. And this is a daily ritual. And this is something that came to me through this trauma. Every trauma has, has a cause, has a reason. And we will find that out in time. I found that out when COVID came, nine years later. But it was in time. Social and emotional. Social and emotional is written together because when we meet happy, energizing people, we get to, um, you know, uh, they, they just refresh us. They update us. They upgrade us. So you feel very wonderful. And emotionally you feel, oh, I can just take anything under the sun. And financial. I add financial, especially for the women and for the men. Pakistan is not an underdeveloped country for no reason. We do not give our finances any, any you know, time. And if you have, have no finances, you will say, I have nothing. What am I to do? What finances am I to talk? Read books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and you know, things like that. And I look at this, which, which particular aspect will it be hitting? Can anybody help me? Suggest anything? Yes? The physical one, exactly. So that physical one, which was the best form of me, is now going to get hit. And if I'm the normal, typical person, I was, oh God, if I don't have my body, how can I manage to fight anything else? But then I'll say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me look at this. I've still got my intellectual side working. I've still got my spiritual side. I've got my social, emotional, financial. I've got so much going for me. And all these things, even the cancer would be only affecting a little part. Basically, the rest of the body is fine. So this sort of a thing will give you the strength to face any type of trauma. And your weakest point will become your strongest one. You will notice this. And when these, when these will help, you, and these strong points are going to help you in the next trauma, whichever God decides you to have next time. Thank you so much.